no page, no page, just writing books, okay? So you don't have to open your workbook. Um, yes, sir, Tiad. Yeah. These notes we're doing now, can you just do like this in a rough notebook? Or they won't be in a certain order? Uh, you can, yeah, no, those will be in order. But you can just start them on a fresh page in your books. New topic, investment, security, okay. First question to you gentlemen is, uh, but, yeah, what is, what is the JSE? What is the JSE? Yes, Jerry. Full name? Is that correct? Okay, the JSE is the Johannesburg, okay, full name, Johannesburg Securities Exchange, or Stock Exchange, okay, basically saying the same thing. And that's basically what we're going to look at today. Okay, so the use of money to generate wealth and income is done in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So I'm going to talk and I'll tell you when to start writing. Okay, this implies that money increases without much labor. The lovely thing, what happens in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is, what is the main thing that those guys do? Yes, Mr. Kwan. People buy shares of companies. Okay, people buy shares of companies. What type of companies are listed in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange? Public companies. Public companies. And how do you know the difference between a public and a private? Just LTD. Okay, so it's at the end of the word. Okay, LTD would be a, a public company, and PTY LTD would be proprietorship limited, which is that. Private company. Yes. Topic uh, investments. What topic is it? Uh, topic 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, thank you. Topic 12. Yeah, investment securities, then we'll do investments and insurance. Okay. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is write down what are the functions of the JSE. So the functions of the JSE. So what does the Johannesburg Stock Exchange do? So please write everybody functions of the JSE. Yes, sir. So, can we write my notes on the Yeah, it's fine. You, you make notes from your from your pink book. You're making notes from this one. Okay, oh, it's different. So, you'll see uh, marks and things after we do the functions. Uh, I'll encourage you to read the functions that you've got in your book, and then we see uh, the functions that are written here and see how they work. Yes, one conversation, please. Yes, sir. So we go to JSC, how does it affect the country's economy or like the country's economy? Okay, very good question. Um, so the JSC is our stock exchange, but there's different stock exchanges um, in other countries. Um, so like America, they've got uh, NASDAQ, and in the UK, they've got the UK 100. They've got different stock exchanges everywhere. So if we didn't have that, basically there wouldn't be an avenue for companies to loan money. Okay, the main thing, the main thing with with shares and securities and things like that, so a company can get more money. So if I look at my company, and I'll take your question now, um, if I look at my company, I've got a private company, right? And it has no money. So let's say that I've got this great idea and I need a million rand to get my company up and running. I've got two or a few options, actually. One of the options is that I could go to the bank and say that, listen, here's a company that I have, this is what I want to do, I need a million rand, please can you loan me that money, okay? And then the bank will either loan me or not. But another option, if my company is operating and it's operating very well and it's making a certain amount of money every single year, okay, and I'll get you the, the exact figures, and then I can choose to list the company in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange or any other stock exchange for them, a matter of fact. Okay, so like the same private bank is listed here, it's listed in Australia, and it's listed in the UK. Okay, and basically what they've done is say, uh, they've said rather, is that listen, we need 10 million rand worth of money to fund our company so that we can grow it. And then we're going to decide to sell shares and issue shares that are worth 10 million rand. So let's say they issue 100,000 shares, okay? And then they sell them out to the public, they then get the money, they can then use that money to then invest within the business. So if you now have to take that whole Johannesburg Stock Exchange out, okay, that just basically means there's no avenue for companies to get capital through that type of system. They'd have to go to a bank or any other traditional, or Mashonis or any other traditional way of loaning money. Okay, good question. So, good, good question. Um, shares, obviously, you can take dividends, okay. and you can take dividends depending on the performance of the company. Okay, so we'll get to that exciting stuff, but basically, yes, with shares, you don't get interest paid back, you get dividends at the end of a financial year, if the company's done well, if the company decides that they actually want to issue out dividends. 
So I'll share a little story about um, what's the biggest company in the world right now? Amazon.com, right? Amazon.com, the first 10 years of trading, they literally made 0%. The shareholders made zero money. But right now, Amazon is one of the biggest companies because of the strategy that they chose or that they took from the word go. And their strategy was very simple. Let's make a lot of money. Let's not give it back to our shareholders. Let's invest back into the company and let's grow the company. Okay? And uh, hopefully we'll see a skit or, or a little video clip on that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's list some of the functions. The first function of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So functions of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is that it, it encourages new investments. It encourages new investments. So functions... Okay, it encourages new investments. Okay, the second function, and if I go too fast, please stop me. The second function of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, venture capital is made possible. So basically, capital is made possible. And by capital, we mean the money that the company gets to actually build the company and make it bigger or better. So capital is made available. And is that only once the um, company is up and running or can you get capital to start it? Yeah, so with the Jordan so with any major stock exchanges, it's only the major or big companies that actually get listed on the stock exchange. So I can't just take straight marketing now and say that I want to have a listing on the stock exchange and make it a public company and then get shares. I have to have a track record to say that this is what I've done in the past five years or so, and this is the amount of money that I'm making each and every single year. And as I said, I'll get you, I don't want to dump the figures, but there is a certain figure that the company has to be making in order to be actually eligible to get listed on the Transpex Stock Exchange. So it's not just anybody that can go on the JSE. I mean, OK, if you think about OK Groceries, it's quite a big chain now, but it's not as big as Pick and Pay. Pick and Pay is on the JSE, OK is not on the JSE. OK. Um, another function of the JSE is that it raises primary, primary capital. Okay. Capital is made available. It raises primary capital. Okay, primary, basically, capital to get started with. Ah, started is not the right term, actually. Capital to grow. Let me put it that way. To grow business. Yes, uh, Mr. Nima? So, where does the, the JSE get the money from? Is it from the government? Okay, so the JSE gets the money from the public. So, basically, like in a nutshell, you've got this company. See what? You need 10 million rand. You issue out 10 million shares which means it's a million rand a share. Let's put it that way, just to keep the figures uh, simple. Which is one rand a share, thank you. Okay, so you, get, you can get 10 million people okay, buying one share each, and then you've got that capital. Or you can get two people buying half of those shares, and then they literally will own half of the company. Um, I'm not sure if I'm painting the picture properly here. Okay, but obviously, if it was straight marketing my company and I wanted to go public, I'm not gonna issue out all my shares. I'm going to keep some for myself so that I can at least, you know, still have some control over the company. Okay? So I'll give you an example. When Walmart came into South Africa and bought MassMart, which is Game Mac with you and why you guys should know all of that by now, okay? MassMart sold 51% of the shares to Walmart and kept 49% of the shares for themselves. So who then becomes the owner of that company? Walmart. Okay, the people that have 51% shares. Okay, but they still, MassMart still kept a substantial portion of uh, the shareholding, which is 49%. But now all decisions and everything are basically now made at Walmart. Okay. And shares, and now I'm, oh, I'm going everywhere, but we'll get to it. Shares basically say that if there's 100% shares in the company, and you own 50%, and Curtis owns 50%, okay, your decisions are joint. So whatever you decide, he has to decide. But the minute one person owns 51%, then their voting rights basically become more. So when you have an annual general meeting or AGM and you're sitting down and you're deciding on major things, should you uh, expand the company to Africa, should you expand to the rest of the world, if you've got 51% shares, you'll have a bigger say than Curtis who's got 49% shares. 
Okay, but the government doesn't issue the money. It's you guys. You guys can buy shares now. In fact, I always ask this question. Maybe I should ask now. Does anyone have any shares? Yeah, in this class. Okay. There's usually one or two people that have shares um, in the previous matric classes that I've taught. Either their grandparents bought them shares or... But you can go buy shares right now in any company. You can buy shares in Coca-Cola if you want. You can be a part shareholder of Coca-Cola or any, or any company that is listed that is a public company. So the rest of me can buy shares? I would, I would if you've got the money, but if buying one share doesn't really help. You need, to, you need to really go in for it. Like when you listen to uh, Warren Buffett's story, Warren Buffett is one of the major shareholders of Coca-Cola, okay? But when did he start buying Coca-Cola shares? Probably in the 80s or in the early 90s. And he's just been building up and building up and building up and building up. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so another function of the JSE, okay, so it raises primary capital. It provides protection for investors. So the people that are investing, the people that are buying shares, it provides protection for investors. And we'll go into more detail into all of these things. Provides. Provides protection for investors. Okay. Another function is that it encourages short-term investments, encourages short-term. So guys that trade Forex and guys that trade on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange are two totally different investors or traders, okay? The guys that trade in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange can be short and long-term investors. So what do I mean by that, okay? So you literally can buy shares now, Coca-Cola, and relax for the next five to 10 years and see what happens. But ask anyone that trades Forex in this class, there's no way you will ever be able to buy shares right now and just hold them for the next five years if you're using a normal Forex account. Okay. Come again, yeah. So in Forex, it's, it's, it's called derivatives trading, basically. You want to trade within a day. Okay, if you go over a day, you will go to the second day. Yeah, you can still do that, but most, in most cases, you don't want to do that. You want to trade within the day, get your profits within the day, and, 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 and leave that account within that day. Whereas, with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, you buy shares now, and you'll keep them for either a short period of time, and by short period of time, it's not like today. Okay, so let's say three to six months, okay? Or you can keep them for a long period of time, five to 10 years. Okay, as I said, Warren Buffett is a very good example of that. And what did he decide to do when he bought the Coca-Cola shares, according to the story, obviously, is that he waited for the price to drop. Every time the price dropped, okay, and then he bought the shares. Every time the price dropped, then he bought the shares. So if you just go to the history of Coca-Cola, okay, in the history of most companies, you'll find that there's usually a slight dip or a slight drop, okay, in the percentage or the price of the share every time there's a major world event. So I promise you now, we had 9-11 uh, in 2001. Okay? So if you go look at the share prices of major companies in 2001, 2002, you'll notice that they're probably much more weaker than they were in 2000. Okay? 2008, we had the housing bubble in America, where there was a big uh, financial crisis and whatnot. Okay? If you look at company shares again in that period of 2009, 2010, you'll notice that they were probably slightly cheaper than they were in the previous years. Uh, what do you say? Is there money that uh, that I So my understanding, of when I watched this documentary, that's exactly what he did, okay? Um, but he didn't just invest in one thing. So he's got a very nice model that Warren Buffett uh, uh, works on. He didn't just invest in one thing. He invests in a lot of companies. But he invests in mostly companies that people don't know about. So most of the companies that actually made the money are like your normal, they're called mom and pop sh stores. Basically, random stores that just open up, you know, in Marisburg and whatnot, and in, in small towns. Then he sees potential in them, and then he invests in them, and then he grows them, then he makes money out of them, and then he goes and buys more shares than obviously the major big companies. I don't think we'll have time to watch that whole documentary, but it's a very interesting uh, documentary. Maybe if we do off the school, well, I'll share the link with you guys. Without time. So that's why people really get rich off investing in stocks. True, very true. Okay, um, and just explain what you mean to the class. So profit outside 5,000%, they make. 
for your bar hard to be able to load fast, and then as soon as the pandemic's over, the prices will increase and the same for the last one, not the last. Okay, hundred percent. Right now, um, I know two guys that are buying properties, okay, because exactly as what I'm going to say, the property prices are low, either because people have defaulted on their properties, which means that they couldn't afford to pay anymore, because people obviously had lost their jobs during this period, and then if you default on the property, you can't pay anymore, the bank takes it back, repossesses it, and then sells it at a much more cheaper price. Almost okay. like an auction. Right? It's almost like an auction, but... Yeah, almost like an auction, but not quite. So there's a website in case you guys are interested when you do have money. It's called the Sheriff's website, okay? And basically the Sheriff's website, all the property that have been repossessed around the country goes onto this website. The f has also got their own platform that they do. So the Standard Bank, so do the major banks. But the Sheriff's website specifically, okay? All the properties that have been um, repossessed go underneath there and they go for dead cheap, okay? Let's carry on. Um, it encourages short-term investments, I've said that. Okay, another one is that it sh shares are valued and assessed by experts. So the shares are valued, okay, one of the functions, shares are valued and assessed by experts. Okay, tomorrow uh, when we have class, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring the top ten or top twenty companies in the country right now, and I'll show you what the share price of each uh, is. Okay, and then you can see what the different shares are like. Yes, sir. So if you're yeah. investing in these type of things, would you recommend like something the app Easy Equity? So I'm not sure. I don't, I, I don't know about uh, does Easy Equities uh, trade shares up for JSE? Yeah, I don't know about it. Top forty and uh, is it? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Um, so you can choose your country, so all you can invest. Yeah, I see what you mean. So when you're investing in the JSE, me and you can't just go ahead and invest in the JSE. So it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but hear me out. You can go buy shares today, but you personally would have to go through a broker, and that broker, like we use, for Forex, we use brokers like JP Markets and, and, and XM and whatnot. Okay? Those are Forex brokers. There's other brokers that are brokers specifically for the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So you want to buy Coca-Cola shares, or you want to buy Pick and Pay, Spa, Woolworths, MassMart, Nasdaq, all these shares. You literally call your broker first, and then your broker then buy the shares on your behalf. Okay. Whereas with forex trading, okay, you just get a broker, and you still have a platform, and you do all the trading yourself. Does that make sense? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. So just to give you an example, okay? Just to give you an example, in, at, at the company that I work for, in Destek, they had a whole flow called Global Markets, okay? And in the Global Markets uh, flow, what they basically did is they took all the client money and they invested it in both forex and in stock exchanges like Johannesburg Stock Exchange and. Um, why am I forgetting the other ones? US 30, UK 100, um, NASDAQ, all of those stock exchanges. Okay. Six years, sir. Yes, sir. I think, I think if you've got substantial amounts of capital to start off your investment, I think it would be a good idea. My only thing is that if you've got, just like with Forex trading, actually, if you've got a thousand rand right now, yes, you can invest in shares, right? but you'd have to really wait a long time to actually see any sort of profits or any sort of real money with that, because a thousand rand is nothing, okay? Um, but if you've got like 50,000 rand, that's a different story, okay? And then, as I said, tomorrow, just remind me the exact same question, okay? When I have the list of the top 20 companies and how much each share costs, yeah. And then you can see that if I've got 5,000 rand, how many shares can I actually buy at, let's say, a mass mart? I mean, when I was working at mass mart, and you must quote me on this uh, tomorrow, when I was working there, uh, the share price was about 180 rand a share. Okay, I'm not sure how much it is now because I haven't been following uh, share prices. Okay, but it was like 180 rand a share. Okay. But you'll find that there are thousands of shares. So when it's time to actually pay out dividends, which is the money that you earn from your shares, your percentage becomes so small if you've got like 1,000 shares, it means nothing. Okay end up getting like cents or something. But the guys that have the most amount of shares will then get proper, proper money. Okay, so just remind me of that tomorrow. So, so like what do you mean if, if it comes to a thousand, a lot of people investing in it, but they still have more money? 
So like like would that company be in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange? Would that company be a private company? So it would all depend. If it was in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, it probably has already a lot of people that have invested in it. That's why it's there. <coughs> but if it's like in my company, so right now it would be easy for me to say, I'll give you 50% of my company, give me a certain amount of money. Because it's not a big company, it's not generating a lot of money, okay? Um, whereas once you've got a company that's established, any of these top 50 or top 40 companies, um, and then yeah, it'll be a different story. Let me carry on then, I'll take your question now. It also acts as a link between investors and public companies. So between you and the public companies. So it acts as a link between investors and public, not private, companies. Can you still remember your question? Yes, sir. Yes, talk to me. Yes, sir, if a student in this class wanted to buy shares in your company, sir, or your business, would that be possible? Sir? So it would be possible, but the, the thing with private companies, so here's the thing with the public company. Coca-Cola can't say, I mean, you know, sorry, uh, we don't want you to buy our shares. Okay. Any company that's listed on the JSE cannot stop you from buying shares. Whereas a private company, okay, the directors of the company then have to come together and actually decide whether they want to sell your shares or not. So in my company, I'm the only director, so I'm the only one that decides. So I can easily sell your shares and you can become a director and a shareholder in my company, okay? And yeah, and then we carry on. But I decide on that. So if me and Clarissa owned our own company and we have 50% shares each and you came in with a million rand, and I said, no, I don't want, I don't want Ken in our company, and Clarissa says we need a million rand, okay? We then vote, and since we've got the same amount of shares, uh, if let's say I've got 51% and he's got 49%, my vote counts. And then we don't get you into the company. So private, it has to be decided by directors. Public, anybody, anytime can buy shares. Yes, sir. So, uh, do you have to declare your business to the school? Sir? That's a good question. I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't. Is it? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because, but when I was interviewed, I shared all of the stuff. So it's not like they don't know uh, that I'm hustling on the side here. Okay. Uh, it also regulates the market for dealing with shares. Regulates, that word regulates, the market for dealing with shares. Regulates. Okay, so Johannesburg Stock Exchange obviously looks at the whole market that of buying and selling of shares and makes sure that everything is done above board. Okay, it's not like anyone, any company can decide how they want to sell their shares. Everybody sells their shares in one specific way, which is through a broker, basically. Okay, so Coca-Cola will come to the side and say, to my C, you just got a 10 million rand, please buy 10 million shares from us. Okay, it has to be done through a broker. It's regulated, okay, which means that... Um, Everything is done above board. Yes, sir. So does Jess have to get permission from your company to put out the stock? So you would be the one, it's called the IPO, additional public offering. You'd be the one that realizes that, listen, we need more money now as a company. We need to grow. And then you apply to the JSE and say, okay, cool. I now fulfill all these criteria to be listed under the Johnsburg Stock Exchange. Please, can you list us? And then depending on how many people want your shares on the first day, it will determine the share price. So you don't say that the share price must be 100 rand or 1,000 rand. Okay. It will depend on the demand of the shares. So the more people want it, the higher the price. The less people want it, obviously the lower the price. And, and so was um, inside trading for you just explain the whole thing? Yeah, so I think, I mean, I don't understand what it is. Yeah, so basically inside trading is me. College was a company, and I knew that, okay, we're closing down next year because of the COVID cases, or I knew that we're going to build another extra block of, uh, of, of, of classes here and we're going to get a thousand more students next year. You know, that's information that is not freely available to the public. So it becomes a problem when you then trade based on that information. So if we're a company and we're going to build another uh, 10 classes and we're going to get another thousand students, what do you think is going to happen to the share price in the next year? It will increase. Why will it increase? Obviously, because things are going to be better. We're going to be operating on a much more bigger scale. We're going to have more people coming in. Okay, investors are going to be confident in our company, and then it increases the share price. But if I knew that in the next 10 years, they're going to 
closed down College Road and closed down uh, Princess Margaret Road, and it's just going to be Alexander Road now. So parents now have to drop off their kids at Alexander Road and have to walk here. Okay, that could be information that is get uh, detrimental. Thank you. Okay, to investors because they might look at it and say, okay, cool, this school is then not going in the right, or this company is not going in the right direction. People won't have access to come to the company in ten years' time. Okay, let's actually disinvest, and that drops the share price. So insider information is you having information that other people don't have, which is basically unfair, and it's a fraud, actually. Last so, question? So um, why would like, a company not want to follow with Jason? Why would a company not? Yeah. Possibly private companies. So the company that like, Mr. Sintipa was working for right now, I gave you an idea of how much he was going to go earn there. Which is a, it's a huge company, and they own like five other companies. But it's a private company, and they run it themselves. So they decide what's... What, how they're going to go or what the future of the company is. Whereas once you're a public company, okay, and then you have to disclose a lot of things. You have to disclose your salaries that you pay out to your directors. You have to disclose your financial transactions or financial payments. You have to disclose everything. So you can go and see how much the CEO of MassMart earns today, right now. It's public information. Whereas you'll never see how much I earn and how much I've made because it's a private company. So some companies might want to some companies might not be comfortable with that. Some companies might not need the capital, like the company that Mr. Steve was working for. They've got enough money, so they don't need to actually go out into the public and sell shares. And remember, selling shares dilutes the power that you have in your company, because right now, if you open a company, you've got 100% shareholding. But the minute you sell to Hat David, Lamini, and Tuli, you decrease the power, you decrease the power, you decrease the shareholding. Okay, the last uh, function of the JSC is that it reg uh, okay, I said that regulates the market for dealing with shares. It facilitates electronic trading. Okay, facilitates electronic trading. And we'll stop it there. Okay, those are all the functions of the JSE. Okay, tomorrow we'll carry on looking at shares and the different types of shares and whatnot. Jens, enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, sir.